So today we're going to build the hybrid Renesis motor, which is a combination of the Renesis RX-8 six-port motor with GSLS E13B rotor housings. This is how we make the magic happen. All right, we've prepped all our parts in previous videos. Everything's clean, painted, ready to go. Get that front plate, that front housing on that engine stand head. We've got a Mazda Trix engine stand head. I like to drop the stationary gears in, check fitment. You can see we've got a polished bearing. I'm just running factory RX-8 main bearings. They'll work fine in most performance applications. You could always run a three window main bearing, but I kept these mains factory. A uh, couple bolts to hold them in. Ended up going with a Teflon encapsulated water O-rings in this project. Um, I know I'm going to put some serious heat through this thing. Uh, they have a little bit higher temperature range. They're a little more expensive. I've got them on the site. Uh, they come from the rotary aviation side. And I always like to use Hylomar. I would only use Hylomar with the TES O-rings. Um, but also with factory water O-rings, which I use in most customer builds. I also used Hylomar in most customer builds. And as well as my uh, race motors that I build for the race team. KMR and Mazda Trix. Always uh, factory O-rings and always Hylomar. So just some just some options there. You can check that out. So with the dowel pins in, O-rings in, everything Hylomard, I like to drop it down on, keep everything aligned, give it a little press. So that's looking good. Everything's lined up. Water O-rings in. And you can start to see the motor taking shape. You've got that GSLSE rotor housing with all of the Renesis exhaust and Renesis intake, allowing for that multi-port combination or what a Mazda Trix originally for, referred to as a hybrid build because it's a combination of RX-8 parts and RX-7 parts. RX-8 exhaust, RX-7 exhaust. Lots of flow right there, lots of horsepower potential. Um, and, you know, properly built, they can be a strong motor. So next up, we got our rotors. They're already prepped, previous videos. Um, running ENJ seals, we opted for some nice ENJs. This is not a high mileage build. This is a performance build, so I'm using performance parts, and I like that ENJs don't break. I run those in my race cars. Mazda Trix balanced the rotating assembly, um, so we know everything is ready to go. Just clean it up, wipe it down with acetone. A little bit of assembly lube on the rotor. RX-8 side seals a little bit of grease or whatever your preferred method is to hold them in place. You don't want them to fall out um, and then drop it down in. Uh, if everything is properly set up, the rotor should drop in with ease. If anything's binding, sitting crooked, you definitely want to pull it back out and check, but everything dropped in real nice. I was very happy with it. And uh, so we just are going to prep our shaft and then bring it over. I always recommend a little bit of assembly lube or oil, whatever your preference is, on all of the bearings as you're assembling. I don't like a super wet motor. I'll back oil the motor after it's assembled and clamped down, but I do want to make sure the eccentric shaft, bearings, and the rotor are lightly oiled to allow for everything to move freely. You don't want any dry bind, uh, coarse bind. Give it a little wiggle, make sure it feels good. Then we'll drop our apex seals in. Um, I was always taught this particular method. I know there's other methods out there. I like to assemble the apex seal uh, with a little bit of oil on the face and then carefully slip the springs in behind it and press it down um, to each their own. Hey, there's a lot of different uh, ways to uh, cook a chicken. Uh, same thing here. There's a lot of different ways to build a rotary engine, but that's my preferred method. Just be careful you do not scratch the rotor housing face or cause any damage on the installation with that spring pressure. So slipping all three apex seals down in nice and carefully. Just a little bit of lube and carefully slipping those springs in the back. And you have it. E&J is installed. Everything feeling really nice. 
I don't want to rotate it too much, but I do like to orientate the motor a specific way that uh, allows me to look at things and bring the center plate down in easily. And if you notice, I'm now installing the next set of water O-rings, a little Hylamar, drop them down in. Um, I don't like to do them all and then put the rotor in, which is oily. I will wipe the open face down and then re apply the Hylamar or just apply the Hylamar, sorry, not reapply, but apply the Hylamar and get those O-rings in, uh, assuring that I don't mix or contaminate any of my sealing area um, with any oil, fingerprints, anything like that. We want a nice, dry, clean surface for the water O-rings and the Hylamar to seal against. And you can see with that center plate on, the motor's really starting to take shape and how much exhaust flow is possible and what the intake looks like. Um, those are lapped side plates. This was a used uh, Renesis motor that I, I got really cheap and a, a set of used rotor housings that I was able to acquire from a friend. Everything got resurfaced. Um, so I still consider this a little bit of the budget performance build. Great for hot rods, great for having fun. Um, you know, this isn't a way to achieve a 120,000 mile motor. This is the way to have a lot of fun, make a lot of power, and do a performance build out of a Renesis motor, which aren't known for performance. So you can see again there the center plate with its primary intake and bottom exhaust side port up against that uh, GSLSE rotor housing. And then dropping the rotor down in, oiled up the bearings, oiled up the shaft. And then I'll be dropping the water O-rings in now after, again, on the back because I'm able to wipe it down with acetone, ensuring that it's clean. And just taking a look. Nice motor coming together. Combination of cool rotary parts that are currently available meaning you can buy new GSLSE rotor housings. You can find a Renesis engine or the parts fairly easily because it is one of the later model uh, RX motors. So it's kind of the idea behind it. Use what's available. Same thing, dropping those E and J apex seals down in. Two millimeter, two piece. Um, a lot of options out there. Uh, you know, you can run one piece. Um, I'm not a big fan of three millimeter. Um, it does have its applications, but generally you're just carrying more weight and the rotor modifications are more difficult. So modifying the Renesis motor to fit basically 13B traditional apex seals and then allowing ourselves to run RX-7 corner seals, again, using a combination of parts that's very available. Uh, you can pick up stuff like this from Mazda Tricks, Mazda dealers, aftermarket shops, and uh, again, used back plate, used stationary gear, just new bearing, all polished up and everything cleaned, went through the dip tank, got resurfaced, and then dropping it down onto those rear alignment dowel pins and letting it align with the rotor and the stationary gear. Again, if you get some bind or something doesn't feel right, that's a good opportunity to see what's going on. Ours dropped on real nice, just had to get the rotor aligned. And you can see that that is basically the hybrid motor. Dropping our back tension bolts in, um, I probably should have gone with studs, but uh, in favor of getting this motor built and so we can do some NA testing with it, we went with the factory tension bolts. Um, I will have uh, factory sized studs available soon so we can torque these down more and I do offer the half inch studding and stud kits but uh, we probably won't go to oversized studs until we actually start boosting this motor. Um, and we're going to start off with NA applications and uh, have fun with that first. On the front cover, the front stack, um, traditional RX-8 stack because I decided to go with a RX-8 front cover. Again, using available parts. I think some of the 13B front covers and early water pump housings save weight, look cool. Uh, but some of that stuff isn't available anymore. So working with available parts, things that uh, basically came with the Renesis motor, we stuck with the RX-8 front stack, which was balanced with that Mazda Trix assembly, and then uh, basically running the factory oil pump and uh, factory spacing. 
I like to get my front shim stack a little tighter than the OEM recommendations. I'm usually looking to land between 1.8 thousandths and about 2.5 thousandths. Um, and if you didn't know, the front stack does have a spacer that allows for end float and adjustment. So that is something you really should pay attention on. If you have no end float at the end of a build, that would be a problem. Um, and we definitely want to make sure we have proper end float. And to do that, you're going to torque down the motor and the stack before you drop the front cover on. Because if you need to make an adjustment, you want to do it before you seal the front cover up. So you can see I'm dropping my rear counterweight on so I can get a flywheel on there so I can hold the motor's rotation so I can apply proper torque to the front uh, main bolt. And you can see we've got all of our tension bolts torqued down, balanced counterweight on, so that's a uh, automatic counterweight, or you can pick those up just separately because we're going to run an aftermarket flywheel, not running the factory flywheel. And then with my uh, uh, indicator, I'm able to check the float. Looks like I gave the thumbs up. If I remember correctly, I landed right at about 2.1 thousandths. Um, I would have liked to have hit two on the money, um, but with the combination of parts we had, I felt that that was acceptable. And uh, definitely within the range of the performance build, we've got our oil pump on, drive chain, you want to check to make sure you don't have too much slop, um, but they're pretty solid, you know, generally you can at least reuse them once. This motor that I picked up had 100,000 miles on it, reusing the oil pump, chain, all of that stuff, they have a pretty low fail rate, and this is just a performance fun build. So there with our front cover on, which also houses the RX-8 water pump uh, assembly. Uh, we've already checked our end play. Our oil pump drive is locked down. So we dropped our front pulley on and torqued down that front main. With the front pulley bolt torqued down, we can now rotate the motor. It's safe to rotate it, check it out. We still gotta drop our oil pan on, a little bit more work underneath to do. But essentially, that's a built Renesis hybrid. And right here, you can see why we do this. It's the combination. It gives us six intake ports that have high volume flow potential possibilities and six exhaust ports to match that intake flow. To make horsepower, you got to be able to get air into a motor and out. And this is one of the highest flowing combinations you can build as far as 13B motors go. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to follow the series if you haven't seen the previous videos. Check it out. We've got links in the description below. Check out the KMR shop if you haven't. We've got some new sweatshirts, t-shirts, things coming out as the holidays hit. And make sure to keep on brapping. We're going to brap-bap on out of here. That's a wrap. That's a brap.